today, I'm so glad that y'all could drop in and spend a little time with me this afternoon because I want to show you this recipe that a friend shared with me. One of my old high school buddies, uh, Marilyn Milson and Diane Tedder, uh, came to spend a few days with me. And Marilyn would always take one night and do the cooking. Well, when it was her night, she made this most wonderful roast, and I loved it. And I have made it a few times since their visit. So I really do want to share it with you because it's super simple uh, and it's got flavor that will knock your socks off. So we're going to start with just a chuck roast. And my chuck probably weighs maybe right at four pounds. And I'm going to start by just salt and peppering it. And I'm going to put a little garlic powder on it. And I'm cooking a, a boneless chuck roast. Now, if you can find a bone-in, I still love that bone-in because it's got that blade bone in it. And that bone offers you so much flavor. Now, I have chosen to cook this pot roast in my multi-cooker, which will take me from stovetop to, uh, to a slow cook. So I've I'm going to be able to sear this meat all in one pot. And in no time, I'll brown it off. And from there, it's so easy. So we're going to sear that off on both sides. I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be ready to flip it. And I'm going to share the rest of the recipe with y'all because you are I think you're going to love it. Every time I use this recipe, I think about Marilyn and uh, that crazy Diane Tedder. We grew up together and we used to have more fun. And Diane is one of those people that she can remember like the first word we said to each other when we were 11 years old. She can remember everything that we've ever done. And I always love getting with these girls because they remind me of all the fun things that we've done. In fact, um, at our last class reunion, y'all, I, I went home for that. So I have to say that the whole weekend was a huge success. The best part of the reunion was just being with my friends, my old friends stepping back in time and uh, just going back to those days where you lived under mom and daddy's house and. You didn't have any worries. Of course, as a teenager, you think you do, but then you realize you had no worries. And uh, your friends were everything to you. They were everything. And to just step back and uh, remember all the great times we had and how much we all meant to each other uh, was wonderful. It was wonderful. Well, we're back in the kitchen, y'all. I've had our pot roast. Uh, I've been searing it off and it's ready to turn over. And now I'm gonna share with y'all the other ingredients that we're gonna put in it. And really today's uh, visit in the kitchen is all about busy families and easy meals, things you, that you can do ahead of time. You know, I love being able to put uh, one of these on. In fact, I put one uh, in my cooker last night before I went to bed because naturally I don't have six or seven hours for this to cook. So I prepared one last night and I've got it ready to show y'all. Uh, and this morning when I got up, my kitchen smells so good. And I love preparing this before I go to work and then coming back in and the house smells so, so good. You know, and all you have to do is open up a can of those good old English peas and put a little butter on them and, and some rice and you've got a nice hearty meal. So let's see what our, oh yeah. Yeah, look how nice and, and uh, seared that is. Can y'all see down in that pot? That is so nice. 
really, really good. Okay, so on our roast now, I'm using an envelope of like um, a brown demi-glaze. And like I said, you find this in the, uh, in the section where you have uh, like chili mixes and pot roast mixes and all that stuff in the envelope. That's where you'll find it. Now in this bowl, I'm using a pack of buttermilk dressing, like ranch dressing. So in that goes. And then I'm going to cover it with pepperoncinis. And this makes that pot roast so good. So there you go. I'll show y'all what I've already cooked earlier and you'll see some of them will keep their form and some will kind of break down. But they're so good to eat along with that pot roast. Now the last ingredient is one stick of butter on top of that pot roast and pepperoncinis. There you go. Now I'm gonna turn my cooker to a slow a slow cook and I'm gonna cook this for about six hours we don't put any liquid in it or anything it's gonna make the nicest uh, gravy you have ever tasted just an intense flavor just that simple I think Marilyn might be a little genius I was just blown away with this recipe and I think y'all are gonna love it. So, how many ingredients? Three, four ingredients. Uh, you've got your, your envelope of a demi-glaze, an envelope of ranch dr dry ranch dressing, uh, a jar of pepperoncinis that you've drained, and a stick of butter, and that's it. So you can imagine just what the butter alone does to this pot roast. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So we're back, y'all, and today is all about easy dishes that you can make ahead so that'll free you up so you can spend time with your family and friends uh, it's just so nice sometimes when y'all can get busy playing games and or fishing or just visiting with each other while your meal's taken care of. And these two recipes really, really perform in that manner. Now, I've got a, a breakfast casserole that I make every Christmas Eve. You make it ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator, and just pull it out and put it in the oven the next morning. And then about 45 minutes, you've got a whole meal in one dish, and it's so very good. And uh, your house just smells wonderful while your family's getting together and the kids are opening gifts. So I'm gonna start with some white bread, y'all. And I'm gonna just um, put a little butter on my bread. Now some people, uh, I think, would maybe cut the crust off their bread, but you know, I, I'm not going to do that. But if you've got children in your family that don't like the crust, although you're not going to be able to see it when you dig into it because it's all going to bake together, but you can cut the crust off. And on occasion, I'll actually cube my bread, you know, cut it into cubes, but you know, I'm going to do it the real lazy man's way today. As as last night when I was doing your pot roast to show to share with y'all today, I was also putting together this casserole because, like I said, after we get it all put together, then it just goes in the refrigerator and sits overnight so it's ready for you to just put in the oven without any work at all. So I've got my six pieces of bread. Now I'm going to use just a bulk sausage. And the beauty of this recipe is you can change it around to suit your family's taste bugs. <laughs> That's what uh, 
Michelle called her taste buds when she was a little girl, her taste bugs. Uh, So you can use ham or you can use bacon, but I just happen to love pure old ground country sausage. So I'm going to put this in our pot and I'm going to just par cook it a little bit because you want to be able to get a little of the grease and some of the fat out of it. So we're just going to kind of scramble it up a little bit. And I kind of leave my meat in kind of bigger hunks. I don't like it like just totally scrambled. And then I'm going to throw in some onions. And uh, like I said, this this you just really put the things that you love in it. Sometimes I'll put bell pepper, red and green bell peppers, uh, along with the onions. It's it's really just one of those things you could you could actually put a yellow squash, uh, kind of kind of uh, saute you off some squash and put in there if you wanted to make it a little heavy on the vegetable side. But uh, today and last night's. Uh, breakfast casserole. I just use the ground beef and the onions. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the onions in here and let them kind of cook just a little bit, maybe get, just get a little bit transparent. I'm going to kind of scramble this up just like you would ground beef, but I'm going to leave mine in chunks. Remember, this is an old country sausage that I'm using. But you kind of treat it just like you would a ground beef or ground chicken or ground any meat. Like I said, I like to leave mine in kind of chunks so you really get the taste of that sausage. Okie doke, now we've got that partially cooked. It's not all the way done. You don't want to cook it all the way done because you want a little bit of that fat from your sausage to to blend into your casserole. So I'm just going to come over here and drain this real quick like. And I know you can't see this, but the, the onions got to that transparent stage where they look a little clear. So I'm just going to give that a little shake, bring it on over here, and I'm just going to dump this right on top of our bread. Just like that. That already looks like a great start, doesn't it? All right, I would add red potatoes. So I'm just going to take my red potatoes and I'm gonna slice them and just put them all over that casserole. But I love the fact that this is so easy and that I can do it ahead of time. So now uh, we've got to have the custard part of this breakfast casserole dish. So I'm gonna take six eggs. And I'm using half and half. You can use a 2% milk, a whole milk, or you could even use a skim milk. I'm gonna put some garlic powder in with that, and some salt, and some pepper. And I'm just gonna beat those up real good. and then I'm going to add my half and half. Perfect. So now we're just going to pour this over our bread and sausage and potatoes and onions. And now I'm just going to cover it with cheese. I got a Colby Jack here, and then I've got a medium cheddar, or you could use Swiss cheese. It's really just all up to you. 
Now there's just one little thing I want to warn y'all about. This is the one thing that you're going to want to do before you put it in the refrigerator. You'll want to make sure that you take your tinfoil and you spray it real good because this casserole comes all the way to the top of that dish. Just make sure you spray that fall real good and it's ready to go into the refrigerator. When we come back, I've got this identical dish in the oven. I'm gonna pull it out and uh, let you see just exactly what it looks like after it's finished. Okay, y'all, we're back. And I got this out of the oven and it's still bubbling right here, y'all. It's so hot. So I wanna dig into this and just show y'all what this looks like. Isn't that beautiful? You know, you really don't even need biscuit or toast because your bread is in here. Just perfect. Now let's go to dinner. Now I've cooked a pot of rice. So I'm just gonna dip me up some rice on this end. And you can see it's nice buttered rice. I like to um, make sure I put like maybe four tablespoons of uh, butter in my rice while it's cooking. Makes it nice and seasoned and buttery. All right, so here it is, y'all. This is the center of our plate. So I'm gonna use my big old paddle and see if I can get, look at that. Look at that, look at those pepperoncinis. How beautiful is that? I just, I heard the back door slam and it's just real funny, y'all. Every time I'm dipping up the good meat, uh, boys and dogs show up. See what I told? I, I knew I heard that back door. What are y'all doing? Come on, back. Listen, boys. Guinea is is doing a cooking show right now. This is Henry oh. and John Reed, and uh, they are two of our five. Oh yeah, y'all. And they're the sweetest boys you've ever seen. Let Guinea finish, okay? So look at this, y'all. In no time, we prepped up breakfast and dinner with delicious results. Uh, this breakfast casserole, like I said, I've got sausage, I've got smoked sausage and potatoes in it. Mm -hmm. And it's heavenly. Serve it along with a little fruit and you got a full meal. Now this pot roast, I just, I can't hardly wait for y'all to try this. It's out of this world. I can't wait for you to try these two recipes. So I promise in the near future, I will do some more quick and easy recipes that, that doesn't need a whole bunch of attention. How's that? But a meal that you'd be proud to serve your family. So until next time, y'all, Send you love and best dishes. We were cheerleaders together in high school, and Paula just, to me, was the most beautiful girl there ever was. She had this black hair and those big saucer-sized blue eyes, and she was just so much fun and hilarious. We had lots of good times together cheerleading and laughing and taking all the trips and just you name it, we had a great time.